Knowing your skill and fine-tuning it is important for life in general. The people who get called out to do great things are the ones who are proficient at their skills. And some of you all have skills that you're not using. Some of you all have skills and gifts and talents that are just dying. And we got to resurrect those skills. Some of those skills no longer need to be buried. Some of you all got skills of singing. Some of you all have skills of playing instruments. Some of you all have skills and gifts of encouraging people, of speaking. Some of you all have gifts and skills of athleticism or, or just intelligence or being able to communicate effectively or counseling people through things. And you're not using your skills. We got to be able to use our gifting and our skills and fine tune those because the time is going to come where somebody is going to look for that gift and you want to be the one that they look for when that gift is called upon. Does that make sense? Welcome to the plug. Somebody, if you listen to what was being said in the interview, something that he said was very interesting, very interesting that I peeped out. I actually wanted to get full context, so I watched almost the entire interview to make sure that I, it wasn't just like, you got to be aware even when you're listening to clips online and media that you just don't take one person's small clip and now make a whole assumption off of that one small clip, right? The, the scripture talks about that we need to be vigilant and you don't want to be tricked or duped yourself by believing something that isn't true. So I watched the whole thing, but he said something that was very interesting. He said, I don't be doing that like that. I don't want to be an effing crackhead. But all of your music is about crack. It's about Molly Percocet. It's about drugs. It's drug music. But he's saying he ain't even really about that life like that, honestly. He's not really doing that. And even Nicki Minaj is like, er, wait, what? How? Wait, wait a second. And then he said, I, I don't want to, I'm scared to be doing drugs like that. And so... I think it's very interesting that someone who literally preaches that over their music isn't doing it. Why? I'm going to tell you why. Because the scripture says that for the love of money, for the love of money is a root of all evil. Money isn't evil, but people will do things and encourage people to do things for, for the dollar dollar bills. And we have to be aware of that. The scripture says that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeing who he may devour. And so we have to be vigilant. The scripture says to be sober and to be vigilant because you have an adversary, the devil, who is out and about. So we have to be aware that we don't fall into the traps that society or that the enemy lays out for us. Um, I believe that you all's generation has the most amount of traps set up in life. Like you all have a lot of different things that you can get trapped into, right? With the phones, with the internet, with social media, like the access to things, like you can get trapped really easy. The average age for somebody watching pornography for the first time is fifth grade. Fifth grade. And so you can be trapped. It, it probably is younger. That's a, I've been, actually, I've been saying that statistic for a couple years, <laughs> so this could be a, it, it could be even younger. And so the fact that there are so many traps that are set up to get you caught up in things, we must be aware so that we are not bamboozled into doing things or falling into things because there's lots of traps. But the good thing is this, you don't have to fall into the trap. You don't got to fall into the trap. Y'all know, like, I have a wildlife removal company, and I be removing animals and all that type of stuff. There are certain animals that don't go into the traps that we set up. B because some of them are smart. And one, of them, one thing that I noticed is that if one has been caught in a trap before, it's called being cage shy, where you won't go back into the trap. I think y'all are a lot smarter than the squirrels that I catch, right? Y'all are smarter than the squirrels. We need to be a people who, in other animals, they will see an animal being trapped and they won't go into the trap. Let's learn from other people so that we don't get caught up in different traps ourselves in life and be bamboozled. I have a question for you, but before I answer that question, 
I got mic runners? Where are my mic runners? Um, before I ask the question, um, I want to make sure you all join us on our Bible studies every 7.30, every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., 7.30 till whenever it ends. It'd be really solid. It'd be really, really good. I'd be having some really good information in those Bible studies. And I also want to encourage you all to follow us on YouTube, like, subscribe, smash that bell notification just so that you can be engaged with what we're talking about, what we're preaching. It's good to listen to something multiple times, okay? Like, listening to a message one time is great, but even what Nicki Minaj just said, the more you listen to it, program, we want to be programmed to do things for the Lord other than the other way. And so we want to listen to these things consistently. Um, Let's talk about the power of music. Question, does music influence us spiritually? Does music influence us spiritually? And if I could get somebody to not just say yes, but give an explanation uh, of why they agree or disagree. Does music influence us spiritually? Let me get right here. If you could, uh, what's your name, ma'am? My name's Kamari. Y'all make some noise for Kamari! So I feel like music can like definitely lead us on spiritually like it can move us because if you're like depending on like how it is and what you're listening to not only can it affect you spiritually especially if you're feeling a certain way or something has happened and Mm. you're like crawling back to the same unhealthy music that's like like okay if you're like already you know feeling down or something like that and you're crawling back to this stuff and it's telling you or like it's feeding you junk, cause you know junk in equals junk out. Yeah. And you're just going back to the same like messed up lyrics or you know, the same stuff that's like just not good for you anyway. So it definitely can affect you. No, I get it, I get it, that's solid, that's solid. That's a good point. It's like, it's like something we talk about often is like, if you're depressed, why are you listening to depressing music? You know, you need to listen to something that will uplift your mood, not get you stuck in the same thing, right? Got a hand right here? And then I see a hand back there as well. What's your name? Judah. Y'all make some noise for Judah. What we got? So basically, it's like smelling something that you remember from like first grade it like triggers a memory in your head okay it causes you to start doing that thing again and it's like music so like say for instance you're listening to you're listening to like a happy go lucky tune it makes you just feel good but like if you're listening to drugs and stuff then it's going to make you want to try to try and do drugs okay it's, it's like a cause and effect uh, system. Okay, young you man. You listen to this, and then you want to do it all of a sudden. It's like the one time where I, where I smelt tricks, and I, and I wanted to try some again, but it could be either bad or good. It just depends what you listen to. I like that, Judah. I like that, my boy. That brother used scientific words, cause and effect. I like that. I like that. What we got back there, my man? Um, What's your name? My name is Mike. Y'all make some noise for Mike. All right, so, you know, I think music can influence you spiritually because, like, you know, like, when I'm in my feelings, I always play that Huncho album, and, like, it always get me through tough times. And, you know, like, music can really influence your emotion, (laughs) your mood, like, help you just get through problems in your life. Okay, okay, so my man clowning out here, all right. <laughs> so, um, so who is the artist that you said? Uh, Huncho, one Huncho, of the best Huncho. artists out right now. Wow, wow, okay. So we need, we see that a couple people need to answer the altar yeah, call. Yeah, like, when you're feeling this. like, what you supposed to listen to? You just supposed to like, just sit there, just look at the wall? Yeah, I mean, that's a valid, I, I can get your point, right? If you are feeling some type of way about something, People do use music to help them get through. And, and that's not bad. I, I don't disagree with that. Now, the type of music that you listen to can determine an outtake and even how you move through that situation, 
right? So for example, if, if you got somebody in your family that got murdered, right, and you're trying to resonate or get over that murder, you don't need to listen to drill music because it's going to talk, it's going to cause you to want to try to murk somebody instead of going through it the proper way, which is how the Lord told us to do. When I, yeah, certain music, certain, certain music in, is, has a spirit of murder behind it. Let's not act like it doesn't, right? Like, let's not act, let's not act like some of the music that, if you're talking about killing people, <laughs> what, what else do you think it's going to invoke in you, especially if you're already angry? It's going to give thoughts of rage, murder, hurting somebody. Like I said all the time, when, I used to, when we used to about to go into a fight, we're not listening to, I love you, Jesus. We're not listening to that. We're listening to, knock if you bug, cry my hey. Like, we ready to, we, you put in on something that is going to meet the energy level that you're at to help you, either to help you get there or go over the top. And so we have to be aware of that. Like, clearly, I don't agree that you should be listening to that to get you to help you through your stuff. But there is other music that is out there that can help you get through things. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? What we got right here? What we got right here? Does music affect you? Does music influence us spiritually? Does it influence us spiritually? Music can inf like influence you like spiritually. Talk louder for me. Music can inf never mind. What, bro? You got it. You got it. You got it. So like basically like so like if you speak into existence, it's gonna happen. Like like so like if you keep talking about it, it's gonna like happen. Yeah. No, 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 brother. You said something powerful. I actually want you to say that again, but I want you to say it louder because it was it, with some confidence because that was actually really, really good what you said. If I keep speaking into existence, it's going to happen because, like, you keep saying it over and over, so then it's going to, like, actually happen when you don't want it to happen at yes. the wrong time. That's solid. So what he's saying is even the music that you listen to, and even it was said in the video, Future was like, you know, if you keep on, he was using it in a sense because people always associate him with drugs, right? And he was saying that, you know, if you listen, if you keep on saying those things over and over and over again, eventually you're going to do it. And it's like, bro, what do you think? You're confused out here because you're saying things that don't coincide with the message that you actually preach over the, you know, he said, literally, he literally said, I talk about drugs because that's what people want to hear. Now, do you think that the culture wants to hear that, though? Do you think that's yes or no? It's a good question. I think we've been conditioned to, as Eliza was just saying, but I think it's interesting. I don't think we inherently just want to naturally come out the womb talking about codeine and Sprite. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> but this is good. I think it absolutely, 100%, positively does affect us spiritually. Music moves us. Music changes our mindset. Music will have us do things in a certain way. Based off of the music that we hear, it can influence something within our life that can change from, it can change our actions because music is spiritual. If music did not affect us spiritually, why would God tell us that we should worship him in spirit and in truth? Why would he tell us that we should sing praises when we come into this place? God is a spirit and knows that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if he's telling us that we should praise him, that we should worship him, that we should usher that stuff in, then clearly it has spiritual implications when with the music. Now it depends on what music. If we're doing a praise and worship song, that can influence you spiritually to live in a certain way. That can influence you and to live in a certain way. But if you listen to other music, it can influence you in the wrong way as well. And so we have to be aware of that and we have to really like pay close attention. All right? Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. If you think about it, right? 
If, if someone, ladies, if, if, a, if a gentleman is trying to, you know, have sex with you, I'll say it properly, it's because I was looked at a little ratchet first service, right? If they are trying to sleep with you and you come into the house, there's certain music that's going to be played to set the mood. You're going to play that, you're going to play some R&B music. Most of you all will probably be playing The Weeknd or something like that to try to get in the mood because you're not going to be listening to hype music. I, you know, that's not going to put somebody in the mood, right? Like Fred Hammond or Kirk Franklin being played is probably not the best choice of music for that time. And so you're probably going to be listening to R&B. If you want to fight or, you know, you're probably going to be listening to drill music or something like that. It's very evident that music influence. If you want to get closer to God, you're probably going to listen to music that, is, that has spiritual tones and notes within it that can lead you to a place of worship. Music is derived from the Greek word musa, which equals muse. Music actually equals the word muse. Muse means to think something over in your mind consistently. So if you muse over a problem, that means you're consistently thinking about that over and over again. And that is exactly what music is. Music is something that is played that you don't just listen to once, you listen to it multiple times in order to, you know, based on the feeling it gives you, the dopamine chemicals that gets released, it feels good to listen to it. We often think of music as something to amuse us, but it can eventually cause you to abuse your life. Music should not just be used for amusement, especially the wrong type of music can cause abusement within your own person, within your own body. Certain music can cause you to do things, and we have to be aware, abuse means this. Abuse means abnormal use of something. So when something is abused, you are abnormally using it. Gasoline, right? Gasoline is good, correct? Who drives? Who drives? Who drives? Who got a whip? Who got a, okay, okay. How many of you all use gas? Anybody got an electric vehicle in here? Okay, okay. I'm just trying to, a couple of y'all got one in the back? No, no, not you. I mean, not your parents. I mean, you. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. So gasoline is good. My boy, she gave you a warning already, my boy. My man, my man, she gave you the warning already. Yeah, nah, I don't, huh? <laughs> she gave you the warning already, all right? And I saw her give you grace, all right? Tuck it, my boy. Actually, just get Betsy, man. Just get Betsy, man. Just get Betsy, all right? We let it slide. We let it slide the first time. All right, so something that we got to be aware of, though, is gasoline. Gasoline is naturally made from the earth, and you use it for your car, but it would be really crazy for somebody to go to QT and like, yo, 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 let me get a cup full of 87 and start drinking it, right? That's abnormal use, which is going to ruin your body, right? And so you have to be aware of what you put inside of your body. Certain things are, if you abnormally use it, it can cause abuse, which can damage you as a person, okay? One of my favorite Bible characters is this man that goes by the name of David. Y'all know about David in the Bible? Make some noise if you, like, if you uh, like the story of David. Who likes the story of David? Okay, okay. Which part of the story do you like? Is it the David when he defeats Goliath? Or is it the ratchet version of David when he was stealing people's wives and having them killed? Right? Because David was a, David has some ratchet tendencies right? While he killed a bear, while he killed the lion, while he killed Goliath, right? He was known as being a warrior, but more important than a warrior, he was known as being a worshiper. David was a man who was, he would be con considered a warrior in today's language, but he also was somebody who worshiped. And we want to be a people who not only, <laughs> don't scare him, Tiff, <laughs> Not only are <laughs> we want to be a people who are known 
for their worship. Now, in the book of Psalms, can anybody tell me what psalm means? What does psalm mean? What is a psalm? You can yell it out. A melody, a song, a poetry, a PSA? Oh, P-S-A-L-M, psalm. P-S-A-L-M, psalm, right? It could be a song, it can be a melody, it can be poetry. It's some form of creative art written and verbal that is given out, you know, to the Lord. And Psalms in the Bible is actually has the most chapters in the entire Bible. And David wrote majority of the Psalms. So David was a warrior, but he also was a worship leader. He also, he was a warrior, but he was also a songwriter. And so David was tough, but he was actually, he was tough externally, but his heart was soft towards the Lord. And it's okay to have tough externally for certain things, but the most important thing is that your heart is soft towards the Lord, that you are positioned to be a worshiper. David made lots of mistakes, lots of mistakes, but every time it was brought to his attention, he was repentive of it. He was repentive of those mistakes, and he would turn back to God immediately when he was made known, right? It's not okay just to know that you're doing wrong and not repent in those moments. This is what made David great. David made more mistakes than King Saul, but David stayed on the throne a lot longer because of his heart posture towards the Lord. How many people know about Saul? Who knows about Saul in the Bible? Who knows about Saul? Who knows? There's two Sauls in the Bible. You got King Saul, who is the first king of Israel, and then you got Saul, who got turned into Paul. Saul, the one who, like, was a murderer and, like, killed lots of Christians, right, and got turned into Paul. And so King Saul was the first king, and this was around David's time. King Saul had the anointing, the, the Lord removed the anointing and removed Saul from being king because he was disobedient. And this is going to lead into this story. He was disobedient. The Lord told him to do something, and he did not follow the instructions entirely. And because of that disobedience, he lost the kingdom. Disobedient. God is a forgiving God, but there are consequences to being disobedient. Uh, I remember when I was young, I was the type of child, to be honest with y'all, that like I needed to learn for myself. Right? Like, I didn't have, I was the, any older child, any oldest siblings in the room? Who's the oldest? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. We didn't have, as the oldest sibling, we didn't have anybody to, like, an older sibling to look up to. And so, we would make a lot of mistakes. Well, let me not say we. I would make a lot of mistakes, right? <laughs> My mom would say, don't touch that iron, it's really hot. I'm the type, I don't see no fire. <laughs> That joint don't look like it's hot. Ah, right? Like I was that type of person. And while my parents would forgive me for making that mistake, there were still consequences of the pain from that burn. God is trying to keep us from getting burned. And this is why he tells us to not have certain sin in our life because it can burn. And while he will forgive us for our sins, a lot of times there's still consequences that you have to pay. And we don't want to, you want to live life by learning from other people rather than having to learn yourself. All right? 1 Samuel 16, first person that get there, say amen. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. First person, 1 Samuel, oh, you already there. He already there. He's cheating. He's cheating. Are you there already too? Okay. 1 Samuel 16 Verse 14, 1 Samuel 16, 14. You're not there yet, babe. You just lied. <laughs> you was on your way there. All right, that's faith, huh? That's faith. 1 Samuel 16, actually there. All right, cool. Let's read this story. I think after we read this today, I think it will show 100% positively that music does affect us spiritually both good and bad. 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. It says, 
We're reading, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said to him, surely a distressing spirit for God is troubling you. So back up really quickly. Remember I told you he was disobedient, and the Lord removed his anointing from Saul and said, you will no longer be king. Your time is up, right? The spirit of the Lord kind of was removed from him, which allowed a distressing spirit, another spirit, to come on to him and bother him. And so we got to be aware of that. Verse 16, let your master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp. And it shall be that when he plays with his hand, when the distressing spirit from God is upon you, and you shall be well. What this is saying is this. The servants was like, yo, Saul, we see that you extra, you got the spirit on you of anxiety or depression or whatever this thing is that is coming on you. What we need to do is find someone who is skillful in playing. Yo, this are, there is a lesson that is right here. Each in every single one of us that is in this room, God has given us a gift. God has given you a skill. God has given you an opportunity to grow and develop in something. But if you do not develop your skill, when the time comes for that skill to be put on a stage or to be promoted, you will miss out because your lack of not fine-tuning your skill. Knowing your skill and fine-tuning it is important for life in general. The people who get called out to do great things are the ones who are proficient at their skills. And some of you all have skills that you're not using. Some of you all have skills and gifts and talents that are just dying. And we got to resurrect those skills. Some of those skills no longer need to be buried. Some of you all got skills of singing. Some of you all have skills of playing instruments. Some of you all have skills and gifts of encouraging people, of speaking. Some of you have gifts and skills of athleticism or, or just intelligence or being able to communicate effectively or counseling people through things, and you're not using your skills. We got to be able to use our gifting and our skills and fine-tune those because the time is going to come where somebody is going to look for that gift, and you want to be the one that they look for when that gift is called upon. Does that make sense? Yeah. It says this, that when they would play the harp, that the distressing spirit would leave. Verse 17, so Saul said to his servants, provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. So he wasn't looking for no average player. He was looking for somebody that could play well, who in here plays instruments? Who plays instruments? Who plays instruments? All right. How many, how many people in the band? Who's in the band? Are most of y'all in the band? All right. Y'all, I tried band. I tried band for one year, and I realized something really quickly when I was in the band, right? Uh, I was, yeah, definitely. I did not want to practice in it. But when they was, everybody was playing together, it would make it seem like I was playing good. You know, like you can, yo, 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 you're asking too many questions. I tried a couple instruments, all right? I tried the trumpet. Yo, what's wrong with the trumpet? I thought that was a solid instrument. Wow, wow. What do you play? Okay, I, you, you, all right. You look like a clarinet player, my boy. Like you played a clarinet player? All right, all right. So there are people, there's different levels when you play an instrument. And some of you all know the people in your band who don't practice and you can tell. When the time shows, you can tell. We, we need to be people who are just practicing. We, whatever it is that you're doing, do it to the best of your ability. If you're playing volleyball, yo, do it to the best of your ability. Basketball, tennis, swimming. Any swimmers in the building? Any swimmers? Okay, we got a couple swimmers. All right, all right, cool. Do it to the best of your ability. Let's keep on going. Verse 18. 
Then one of the servants answered and said, Look, I have seen a son of Jesse, a Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing. Number one, skillful in playing. Number two, mighty man of valor. Number three, a man of war. Number four, prudent in speech. And number five, a handsome person. I, why did they put that? I, I don't know. Um, but Lana pointed out earlier, maybe it's, he took care of himself, right? He wasn't, he didn't come to church as a middle schooler with no deodorant, right? He, he, he took care, he washed his face, he brushed his teeth, you know, a little Listerine. And yeah, that's what, or maybe he was just a handsome guy. I don't know. I mean, it could be both, you know. He could just be a handsome guy, right? And then most importantly, number five, it says this, that the Lord is with him. So they were looking for someone. And when they were looking, somebody brought out character traits about this young man that made him stand out. People are always looking at you. You just may not even know. People are always watching you, and you may not even know it. You all don't know even some of the youth leaders in here. They have businesses. They are like, they are CEOs. Some of them have, you know, different students that they coach up and and train. And you don't know how you present yourself and what people are saying even about you. You remember uh, last year, we had a youth leader by the name of Keenan Moore, and he passed away, right? Keenan was one of the best youth leaders that linked up church has ever had, right? He was five. But his parents decided, yo, we want to do a scholarship on behalf of Kenan because Kenan was somebody who served faithfully. Kenan was like the first person here and the last person to leave, and he was always faithful. And his mom was like, are there any youth in the youth ministry who could get this scholarship of this money that we just want to give them, right? So they're asking me, in our youth leaders, tell me some leaders, some people in the youth who have good character, who do what they say they're going to do, that we want to bless and reward. And we was able to give that away to two people, you know, Honesty in the back and Sean. Both of them received that $500 scholarship, but it was based on their character. You never know who's watching you and what that can do. And so we want to just be a people who's spoken well about. Let's keep on going. Therefore, Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, a young goat, and sent them by his son David to Saul. So David came to Saul, and, the, and David stood before, uh, stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became an armor bearer. Who got a job? Let me see again. Who got a job? Who got a job? Who got a job? Okay, some of y'all. All right. How many people, their bosses love them? Your boss love y'all? Oh, that's good. That's good. How many people in here, your teachers, your teachers love you? Your teachers love you? Some of y'all, some, I know, all right, all right, all right. Some of y'all, this, it's a lot of hands going up now. All right. Some of y'all, your teachers love you, right? When your teachers, when leadership when someone who, is, who has a higher position loves you, it produces favor in your life where you can do things that other people can't do, right? Like, I remember I was about to fail a class in high school. I was about to fail a class, but my teacher loved me. I was very, this was one of the only teachers that we had a good relationship with, right? My other teachers, yeah, I told you about Dr. Metzger. He told me I was... Kabuku Metzger, he, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, he didn't like me at all, right? Let's just leave it there. My teacher loved me, and she gave me an opportunity to pass even though I was supposed to fail. Anybody ever had a teacher like that? Yeah? Dang, so your teacher's cheating for y'all, okay. Yeah, you weren't about to, but when you have good relationship with someone, They will do things for you with someone that doesn't have good relationship. Relationships are key and important to life. And it says because Saul loved David, he made him an armor bearer, which is great. 
Then Saul sent to Jesse, who is Jesse? Jesse's his dad, right? All right, Jesse's his dad. Then Saul sent to Jesse saying, please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. One good thing that you must know. Character can also not just be looked at by us as youth leaders or adults looking around. Character, your parents, it's all right, that's your mama calling? Nah, that's an alarm. (laughs) Character should be well spoken of by your parents. Do your parents have a good report about you? Yeah? Some parents do lie about their kids too as well. This is very true. But you want to have a good testimony that even your parents feel good about sending you before the king if it comes to that time. They're like, yo, yo, yo. Like, do you think that this person would be good? And your parents are like, most definitely. Or your parents are going to be like... I ain't going to lie, I'd be having to tell him to wash the dishes about three times every night, right? I done had to tell him to get off the game several times and they still ain't do it. We just want to be a people that our parents even speak highly about our character. And so it was, verse 23, whenever the Spirit of God was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit will leave him. I want you all to check this out. This is the highlight of this entire passage. David came skillful with a gift with the Lord on him. Saul had a distressing spirit on him that was tormenting him. The music that David would play caused Saul to have a spirit be contained. He caused the spirit to be refreshed. He caused him to come from a spirit of disturbance to a place of being calm. This is not by words. This was just by the music. If music can cause a spirit to leave someone or to come and be in alignment or line up, what do you think it does on the opposite side as well? If worship can cause us to be free and to like lift up our hands and chains can be broken through worship, how much more do you think the other music can cause bondage to be on us? If worship can cause freedom, do you think the other music can cause bondage? We have to be aware of what we're listening to. There are times where we will unconsciously start playing music that doesn't even align with you, who you are as an individual, or even what you believe and stand for. And we got to be vigilant to not do it. How many people in here like, you love God? Who loves God? Make some noise if you love God. Make some noise. Okay, okay. That was was decent. Tiff, what was that out of 10, Tiff? Six out of ten? Six out of ten? You'll take six? You'll take six? Nah. Six is a D, bro. That's an F, actually. Six, the 60 is an F, bro. It's over five. Wow. <laughs> over 50%. All right. Let's try that again. How many people in there, you love Jesus? Make some noise. <laughs> okay, okay. That was a little better. That was better. That was, that was better, Tiff? About an eight? All right. Huh? A B is better than a D. That is for sure. How many people in here, like, how many people love their mama? Mama, all right. I love you, mama. I find it interesting, right? That if somebody says something negative about your mom, people be ready to fight over their moms, right? Your mama's so fat, right? People be ready, people be ready to scrap over that even if your mom's fat, right? Even if it's the truth, right? Even if it's the truth, right? Remember, you can't let that slide. Why? It's the truth. (laughs) Yeah, right? No, I get it. I get it. I get it. 
somebody said something about my mom one time, and it was a very true statement. It just was like, you know, it was like, it's so true. It's like, wait, you're not supposed to say that though, bro. Like, you're not, that was off limits. Like, and we, we definitely fought after that, though. We definitely fought after that, right? Yeah, I did, actually. I did. I, I did. I did. That, now, I done, now, I done lost some, but that one I won. That one I won, right? And so I find it interesting that your mom is a family member, correct? And so we will, we are willing to fight anybody that would disrespect our mom or our family, right? Would that correlate? Would that correlate? How many of you all are children of God? Amen, that's you, that's you? Okay. So that means God is part of your family, right? That's twin. That's your family right there, right? God is part of your family. How come we will listen to music that disrespects God, that talks badly about God, that actually has demon worship and worship other deities over our God, that's against the kingdom of God and everything he stands for, and we ain't willing to fight over that. Not only do we tolerate it, we dance to it. Y'all be getting sturdy to it. Y'all be making TikTok videos over it. And this is music that is totally opposite of the God that you serve. Totally disrespect the, the one that we call our father. And yet we will still dance to it, listen to it, have a good time with it. And it's just, it's interesting. You had your hand up, young man. You was going to ask a question about that? Not going. It's cool. No, I was going to say, I was going to say, uh, say, um, wait, one time, it was like uh, some kid, he's saying that he didn't believe in God. And I was like, I was talking to him and telling him that, uh, like, you should, like, try to believe. And he was saying, like, the Big Bang made, made humans and, um, and uh, right, people was, like, trying to, like, fight him and stuff. And I was telling him that... Uh, <laughs> they were trying to fight him. Yeah, fight him because he, cause he didn't believe in God. And then um, I was just telling him he should, like, at least try to believe in God because he said his parents didn't believe it, so he didn't. And I said he should, um, shouldn't be, be like his parents and he should, like, try and be better. And, yeah. <laughs> ranga, ranga, be better than your parents, boy. <laughs> that's good, though. I'm glad that you encouraged him in that, and that's bold of you to do that. Because a lot of people may not say anything. So I'm, I'm, I like that, my boy. Now, uh, what school is that that you go to? Huh? Okay, different place. All right, I'm about to say, don't go to that school. <laughs> they beat you up. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, right? The music that we listen to influences us deeply. And I find it very powerful if worship music can break chains off of people. If it worship music can cause things to fall off of us, then we should be a people that during praise and worship, our hands should be lifted high. Our hands, our mouth should be open. It should not be weird for somebody to lift their hands and come down front and engage in praise and worship. That should not be weird. That should be the norm. We want to produce a culture where it's not, it's not just what's weird is if you don't praise God. What's weird is if you don't lift your hands and sing. And what's weird is if you don't engage with the creator of the universe and invite his presence to overtake you and help you with things in life. How many people feel like they need help in life with something? How many people feel like they need help in life with something? Okay. If no, if you don't have your hand up, then you, do, you are so unaware. <laughs> You're so unaware, right, of things. If we need help in life, and God is the creator of the universe who can help us in all things, don't you think that we should at least give him the honor that's due during that time period? Shouldn't we engage with him? Shouldn't we sing freely and openly? Now, I told the first service this. I could understand if... 
I can understand if Eliza was up here singing in summer and in rain and everybody was singing up here and they just couldn't sing. They sounded trash, right? Like they, their voices is cracking. They just sounding trash, right? I could understand if y'all was like, but I ain't trying to engage in this, right? And I'm not trying to like, of course, that's my wife, but she can sing, right? Like she can, she can sing, sing, right? Summer can sing. Rain can sing. Even Deshaun back there can sing, right? Like Sean, Sean got a good voice, actually. Sean got a real good voice, actually, right? And so the fact that we don't engage in there's great singing that's up here can sometimes be appalling to me. But there may be, but we don't know the words of the songs. <laughs> we got a whole screen up here. And sometimes it's just good and beautiful. Even if you don't know the words, to just engage and listen to the words and let it wash over you and just agree with that within your spirit. Somebody answer this question for me. What is worship? What is worship? Where, where my mic runner at? Uh, worship is basically praise. Worship is basically praise. Give yeah. a... Uh, expound upon that a little like more. When, like when you're lifting something up. Something. When you're, okay. No, no, that's, that's actually a good definition. When you're lifting something up, is that what you said? Yeah. Could you expound a little more? So like basically like you lifting something up, like you just, you just keep on praising it. Just, I don't really know for you. Nah, that, that's a solid answer. I'll take that. I'll take that answer. I'll take that answer. I'll take that answer. What you got? Um, isn't it basically like where you pour your heart into something and like you kind of put your life and your everything into that? Like you always constantly praise it. You constantly always dedicate your life to it, stuff like that. Okay, you dedicate your life to it. You're constantly praising it. I rock with that as well. That's a solid answer. That's a solid answer. That's a solid answer. I like that. Anybody else? Anybody else? Somebody we haven't gotten yet. Judah, oh. I'm sorry, brother. You had a good one earlier. Anybody else? Anybody else? One more. One more. All right, fine. Go on, Judy. <laughs> so it's basically just devoting your time into something that you believe is the right thing to do. Like some people, uh, like us, believe in God. They devote their time to praising God, listening to stuff that indulges them into God's arms and stuff. So... And it has an opposite effect as well. So some people could devote their life to Satan. And we have to try and figure out why they do that and how to stop them from doing that, how to get them on the right path. Okay. No, I think you made some valid points. Um, I think one of the things that you said that is very good is like g devoting your time and attention to that thing is important when it comes to worship. Worship is not just a genre of music, right? Worship is not just, actually, worship is a different, say that again. Yeah, worship is a verb. It's an action, right? You can't worship and not do anything. You can't say that we worship God and you don't do anything. Praise is a genre of music. Worship is a genre of music. But worship overall means something totally different. The Urban Dictionary defines worship as, as what you put your heart and affection in. Whatever you put your heart and affection Everybody worships something. Someone is just who and what do you actually worship, right? What is above? Worship means to show reverence, to bow down on knees, and to fall prostrate to adore. And so what happens is this. It means to bow down. Worship means literally to bow down. And when we say that we worship Jesus, when we worship God, we're saying we are bowing down our own desires for your desires, Lord. As Jesus said when he was in the garden, he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. The worship is ultimately humbling yourself to say, even though I may not want to 100% do this, I'm willing to bow down my desires for your desires. And that is a form of worship. And a lot of people haven't gotten to that place of fully worshiping and fully surrendering 
to the Lord. Everybody bows to something, it's just what do you bow to? And a lot of us, we bow to our own flesh. We bow to our own desires. We bow to our own things in life, our own, like, um, our own heart motives is what we will bow to. And we have to be willing and understand that God wants us to put him over everything. And that comes for every aspect of our life, y'all. That comes to, like, when we wake up in the morning, we should be spending time with the king. When we're going to sleep, we should spend time with the king. We should make room, make opportunity to be with the Lord. Some of y'all, you know, some of us, bro, we wake up with, like, like five minutes, hurry up, get dressed, and we dip out. Let's make some room for the Lord in between that. Like, let's wake up a little early so we can spend time with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It means to bow down and worship. We must not only bow down to our own desires in our own flesh. And that's what a lot of music does. A lot of music, um, question, question. In life, Everybody is trying to sell you something. When you all watch TV, right, when the advertisement comes on, they're trying to sell you something. Magazines are trying to sell you something. Everything's trying to sell you something. I'm up here trying to sell you something. I'm trying to sell you on the idea to choose Jesus over everything else. I'm trying to sell you on the idea of not listening to music that can... Uh, take you down the wrong path. I'm trying to sell you on something. And so everything's trying to sell you. My question is this, what is Sexy Red trying to sell you? Sex? I mean, it is in her name, Sexy Red, right? What else is she, what is she trying to sell you? That's, that's true, huh? Being ratchet, she's trying to sell you on being ratchet. Being turned? What else? What is he trying to sell you on? What is Gunner trying to sell you? Guns. And Gunner's trying to sell you guns. <laughs> Drugs? Rico cases? Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you ultimately what's trying to be sold. They're trying to sell you on a lifestyle that's opposite from God. They're trying to sell you on separating, as Sean said elegantly first service. They're trying to sell you on separating your relationship from the Lord. They're trying to sell you on divorce. Divorcing the Lord and you going one way and leaving him another way. They're trying to sell you on a lifestyle that is opposite of the kingdom. In order to be vigilant and not be bamboozled, we have to understand what are people, what are the messages behind the message? News stations, they have, the news is given a message, but there's a message behind the message. What is it that's behind it, which is the most important thing? This is why I said earlier, you can't just take one clip and just make life assumptions. Y'all, we can't take shorts and TikToks and, and make life assumptions off of a 60 second clip. You have to actually do research so that you're not bamboozled because what if you start believing something that's a lie? How dangerous is it to believe a lie and you base your life off of a lie? That can be very detrimental. Jesus said it like this. He talked about your eye being single and how the information you receive can darken your eyes or illuminate your eyes. Worship is to bow to God's will and his way over our way. Worship, ultimately, it's a posture. Anybody play football? Any, I'm going to ask this again. Any quarterbacks? Any quarterbacks? You quarterback? Like you can throw? Okay, okay, bet. You look like you may have a little arm there. You may look like it, right? You, so as you being a quarterback, right? If they say down, set, hut, you about to throw the ball. Do you throw it to somebody who stays on the line when they say hut? No. 
What type of person are you looking for to throw the ball to? Say that one more time. Can somebody get him a mic real quick? Who got that mic? Summer, you have the mic? Turn it on. A wide receiver. You're looking for what? A wide receiver. A wide receiver. Now, what, what things do a, does a wide receiver do to show that they're in a position for you to throw the ball to them? They get open and they, um, they get wide. They get open and they get wide, right? So they are, what you're saying is they're moving, number one. They're running a route and they're open and you can see that they're in the proper position, right? And a lot of times the posture, when a, when a wide receiver is trying to catch the ball, the posture is their arms being open to receive something. It is hard to receive when you're staying on the line and your arms aren't even open to receive it. That's not the proper posture. The quarterback's not going to throw you the ball if you just like this. God is looking for a proper heart posture even when we're in a form of praise and worship. This is why the scripture even gives us, it gives us instructions on even how to worship. One of the things it talks about, it says, lifting our holy hands. Us lifting our hands to the Lord is a thing of posture. It's a thing of submission. When people lift their hands, right, it's to say, I, I surrender, right? Like if somebody comes in here with a gun, and you know, most, most people are going to be like, oh, hey, hey, oh, well, most of y'all may be running this way. But say, <laughs> but say somebody came in and pointed it, a lot of times people are like, hey, 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 like, Listen, bro, I'm, I'm not a threat. I'm not trying to do nothing crazy. I'm surrendering. And so this is the point of lifting our hands is to show a surrender. A lot of times it talks about, we don't, I haven't seen this a lot on a Sunday morning, but on Power Trip, I did see a lot of you all doing this, coming down to the altar, and we're on our knees lifting. This is a posture right here. It's a submitted posture to the Lord to say, you know what, Lord? Like, I, I am, I'm in a place of humility. I'm in a place of humbleness. A lot of times people say close your eyes is because oftentimes you're focused on everything else so you can bow your head. It is it's another form of honor and worship when you're bowing your head, lifting your hands, and singing the song. This puts you in position to hear from the Lord for things to be broken off of your life and so that you can truly give, give the Lord the glory and honor that he truly deserves. And so we want to be a people who have the proper posture in our movement. We want to have the proper posture in our movement and how we do things. And so what we're going to do really quickly is this. We're often, if you could uh, get that mic from him real quick. We're about to actually get into an opportunity again where we're going to actually do some worship and we're going to practice what we're talking about. We're going to actually worship the Lord in spirit and in truth and we're going to open up that real quick. So I'm going to invite the praise team, plug worship, to come on up really quickly. Y'all come on up really quick. But before they actually start, I want us to do this. I just want everybody's head bowed, everybody's eyes closed. I want us to take a moment. I want us to take a moment. And I want us to sincerely, right now, quiet yourself, focus on the Lord. And I want you to ask the Lord this question. Lord, what is hindering me from giving myself to you completely? What is hindering me from giving myself to you completely? Lord, is there anything that you want to show me that you want me to be free from, that you want me to release, that you want me to let go so that I can be on a place, I can be at a place, a full surrender to you? <laughs> 